Live from WTVO Rockford and your home team, Eyewitness News at 5 starts now. There's more than 22,000 vehicles that travel this road every single day. It is uh, also, unfortunately, the worst uh, major arterial that we have in uh, the city of Rockford. Fixing the roads, a major roadway is getting a big makeover. Plus, cheering on the local team, a massive skating competition glides into the state line, and some of the athletes are from right here in Rockford. And we hope you'll support some of Rockford's most vulnerable residents. We are live ahead of our annual An Evening for Hope telethon. Good evening, I'm Mimi Murphy. Eric is on assignment. We'll check in with him just a little later. One of Rockford's busiest roads is getting an upgrade. Alpine Road from US 20 to Charles Street will be resurfaced in a $1.5 million project with the state of Illinois. While Alpine is a state road, the city of Rockford's taking the lead on the improvements, working with IDOT to reconstruct and modernize the area, including bike and pedestrian lanes. A bulk of the money is coming from the Rebuild Illinois Fund, which also expanded East State Street by Perryville and the recent revitalization of West State Street. Governor Pritzker stopped in Rockford this morning, saying it's important to invest in the people. Up and down the Rockford region, we're restoring and rebuilding, creating jobs and making sure that working families have the opportunities and resources that they need to build good lives for themselves and for their families. And I can promise you this, we'll be back with more. Construction on the stretch of road from Harrison to Charles is expected to start this spring. The entire project should be done by the end of the year. The governor also made a stop at the Rockford Airport today. Our Jess Lipson was there and Jess, Millions of dollars are going into creating new apprenticeships. Mimi, that's right. This investment will support workforce training and development programs. This is an effort to help maintain and grow Rockford's aviation workforce pipeline. AAR will work directly with those 80 apprenticeships being formed. This impacts both aviation students already enrolled in programs like Rock Valley College, as well as veterans who already make up more than 22% of AAR's employees. Over the last two years, Illinois has invested more than $5 million to boost Rockford Aviation's pipeline. That's helped create more than 350 jobs. This is a very powerful example of what can happen, what can be accomplished when government, non-for-profit, education, and industry are all aligned on a single goal, and that is to create jobs, and in our case, create jobs in aviation in particular. At 6, we'll hear from Rock Valley College president about how this is directly helping students pursuing aviation. Mimi? All right, thanks, Jess. A Rockford man is accused of sexually abusing a child. Earlier this month, the Sensitive Crimes Unit looked into a report of child abuse to a juvenile. They arrested Galdina Duarte yesterday. Police say the 55-year-old knew the victim. Duarte is charged with aggravated criminal sexual abuse. A Rockford man is charged with burglary and theft after police say they found him with stolen property. Around midnight, police were called to South 4th Street near 20th Avenue for a suspicious person. They found 44-year-old Ryan Olson in an alley. Police say he was carrying stolen property. No one is hurt after an apartment fire in Freeport this morning. Firefighters were on the scene for around four hours fighting the blaze. The triplex house on South Blackhawk Avenue caught fire just before 10. Crews found heavy smoke and fire coming from one of the units. Everyone inside was able to get out on their own. Damages are estimated to be over $70,000. The Red Cross is helping the families who were temporarily displaced. The cause is still under investigation. An early morning garage fire in Rockford caused $60,000 in damages. Firefighters were called out to the four-car detached garage in an alley behind a duplex on 16th Avenue near Key Malquist Park. Two cars inside the garage were destroyed. A van parked nearby was damaged. Crews were able to keep the fire from spreading. No one was hurt. No word yet on what may have started it. There's a new program aimed at getting and keeping skilled doctors in Rockford. The Integrated Family Medicine Residency Program is starting at the University of Illinois College of Medicine. It offers incentives to create a pipeline of physicians to complete their residency training 
right in Rockford, instead of going somewhere else. The goal is to bring more family practice doctors to the area. The head of the program says family practice is the core of medicine, and there's a shortage of them right now. We know that where the students do their residency, and the residency is three years long, is the place they're more likely to, to settle in their professional lives. Because you're there for three years, you get to know the faculty, you get to know the hospital, and you settle into the community. The Community Foundation of Northern Illinois provided the school a $172,000 grant over three years for the program. The winter wonderland of snow we now have is the perfect backdrop for a major figure skating competition in downtown Rockford. The Midwestern and Pacific Coast Synchronized Skating Sectional Championships are happening at the BMO Center. 2,400 skaters from age 6 to 69 will compete over the next few days, including a local team, the Rockford Park District's Arctic Edge. Coaches tell us they've been waiting for this since it was announced last year. We have been practicing for over a year. Uh, we have two teams and uh, we, we practice a few hours a week uh, together and individually. There is nothing like synchronized skating. If you don't know what synchronized skating is, you should absolutely come and watch. Uh, it is just a bunch of really fun figure skaters getting together and working hard and accomplishing a common goal. The event will bring in an estimated $2.9 million in economic revenue to the region. General admission tickets are still available. The competition runs through Sunday. A chance to support a local nonprofit's mission to rebuild people's lives coming up. We are live at the Rockford Rescue Mission to preview our Evening of Hope telethon. And coming up at 6, defaulting on the debt limit, how actions in Washington, D.C., could affect people and businesses here in Illinois. And snow lovers can rejoice. We have more snow chances on the horizon both for tomorrow and Saturday. I'll let you know how much snow we can expect coming up in just a few minutes. You're watching Eyewitness News. You're a home team with Eric Wilson, Mimi Murphy, Scott Lever, and meteorologist Jordan Wolf. You can make a difference in someone's life today without ever leaving your home. Our annual An Evening for Hope Telethon begins tonight at 7. It benefits Rockford Rescue Mission. Eric Wilson and Candace King join us live from the nonprofit. Hey guys, how's it going? Mimi, so far so good. I mean, yeah. we, it's a little quiet, but mm -hmm. of course things will get a little busier as we get yeah. closer to telethon time. We're still a little bit after 5 o'clock, so we're still right. a little less than two hours away from our annual visit here, although we periodically are here throughout the year. But mm -hmm. this is our big visit to Rockford Rescue Mission for our annual telethon. Yeah, the 25th telethon um, that has been taking place. Is and you've been mission. a part of these for quite a long time. Yeah, we were actually trying to figure out before we came on. I want to say 2011. It was maybe my first 2011 or 2012. I was told so. there would be no math, but that's what, yeah. 12 years, right? That's <laughs> yeah. a long time to be right. a part of this. I know, and you know, each and every year, I'm always inspired and amazed by the stories that we hear. And I know a lot of you guys at home are as well, because the mission is such a big asset to the community. Um, you know, we were talking a little earlier about how maybe people think that um, the mission just um, houses, you know, a shelter for the homeless. But there is so much more that goes on, and the need here is so great. A lot of people who are affected, well, we'll talk to people who are staff members yes. here as well, mm -hmm. but um, a lot of people who are affected by Rockford Rescue Mission and actually who've had their lives put back together right. because of the time who they spent here, mm -hmm. they'll share their stories tonight. Uh, keep your Kleenex handy because <laughs> if memory yeah. serves, Every year at some point, someone's story, it really, it, it tugs at your heartstrings, but the stories are just so honest and they're so emotional and people share their struggles with the real intent of hopefully someone else maybe seeing their story and feeling like they're not alone and knowing that they have a place to get some help. Yeah, and the big reason for the telethon here tonight is to help fund those resources that go on because um, it is not a United Way agency. It receives no funding from the government. So every support dollar that comes into the mission uh, goes towards a wonderful cause and some of the statistics that you'll hear tonight with um, housing, shelter, food, you know, daily meals um, and the amount of people that they serve just staggering. 
you'll learn a little bit more about that when you join us tonight uh, from 7 until 9 o'clock. You can also watch online at mystateline.com or on our Facebook page and the Rockford Rescue Mission's Facebook page. And you don't have to wait for the Telethon to make a donation if you want to right now, rockfordrescuemission.org. Mimi, back to you. All right, thanks, guys. And because of the telethon, some of your Thursday night shows are airing a little later tonight. Celebrity Jeopardy will begin at 12.07 a.m. The parent test will follow an hour later at 107. More snow is scheduled for the state line when we come back. Jordan's tracking yet another storm that could bring us our biggest snowfall of the season, along with some frigid temps. Now, your first born weather forecast from meteorologist Jordan Wolf. Well, the snow that we got yesterday ended up being our highest single day snow total so far this season, just over two inches at the Rockford Airport. That snow is still lingering as we got into the day today. We do see most of those snow showers still working their way a little bit further out to the east, though, leaving actually some clearer skies if we look a little bit further to the west. That's where we find our sky track camera here in Freeport, Park Hills Golf Course. Actually, quite a bit of clearing showing up. A very nice picture with the snow, fresh snow has and falling and those clear skies though now leading to temperatures that are falling a little bit quicker into the evening tonight. Some spots with some of those clearer skies already down into the teens including Galena down to 12 degrees, Savannah at 18, Freeport 21, Rockford still 20 degrees picking up still some snow flurries. Many of our spots end up falling a little bit further into the area tonight. But first we check in with a couple of our weather watchers including Bob on the southeast side of Rockford reporting a temperature of 22 degrees, a dew point of 17 with just over or right around on one inch of snowfall. And then Terry in Genoa reporting a temperature of 18, two point of 15, humidity 90% with a little bit less than two inches of snowfall out there. As I mentioned, the temperatures though continuing to fall into the evening tonight down into the teens, 14 degrees here in Rockford with some of those clearer skies. That's what we're seeing a little bit further out to the west at the moment. Those clear skies working their way in during the night tonight helping to drop temperatures a little bit quicker. However, clouds and snow chances roll right back in as we get into the early part of the day. Tomorrow, temperatures back up into the 30s for the afternoon. Winds coming back out of the south, gusting close to 30 miles an hour at times. So that could lead to some blowing and drifting of both the snow that we have today as well as any new snow that falls during the day tomorrow. We aren't looking at a whole lot of snow for that system, but we time it out here with Futurecast here. Those clear skies allowing temperatures to fall back into the teens, but clouds and snow chances roll right back in by the time we get early tomorrow morning. Some of those lighter snow showers continuing into the early part and later part of the morning, but by the time we get in the late afternoon, I think many of us have ended up clearing out. From that particular system, we are looking at right around an inch of accumulation or just less than that in many spots. However, there is another system that comes in right after, and that's the one that could bring us some slightly higher snow totals and even has the chance to bring us our highest single-day snow total so far this season. I earlier I mentioned yesterday ended up being the highest with 2.2. Well, this one has a, higher, a slightly higher chance to bring some more. However, temperatures are going to be a little bit cooler down into the teens. That leads to snow ratios. That's liquid to snow ratio being a little bit higher. So we don't need as much moisture to provide some of those higher snow totals. That's kind of the situation we're going to be seeing with this kind of powdery, drier snow from this system, but a very narrow band going to set up. That narrow band is really going to determine who gets the highest snow totals. At the moment, that narrow band does set up pretty close to right along the state line. And depending on where if that shifts a little bit, that could lead to some slightly higher totals a little bit further north or further south. However, we do know that we're going to be a lot colder toward the back half of the week. After the snow chances for the weekend, we are back down into the teens by as early as Sunday. And then even the lower teens for some of our high temperatures later on in the week. Low temperatures back down in the single digits, Mimi, and even one below zero. Yikes. All right. Thanks, Jordan. Scott's in next with sports. For the second straight night, there will be a very big boys basketball game in Rockford involving two Rockford teams. And a former Packers assistant coach is headed to New York. Might Aaron Rodgers follow him there? Now sports with sports director Scott Lever. We saw one great basketball game in Rockford play out last night between Auburn and East. Well, another one's only minutes away from happening. This one between Lutheran and Rockford Christian. This one might be even more anticipated than last night's game was. Rockford Christian brings a 22-1 record into the game. Lutheran is 14-7. That's deceiving because the Crusaders have played a brutal non-conference schedule that started at the Boylan Thanksgiving Tournament and carried through the State Farm Classic in Bloomington in December. 
Both teams are 3-0 in the Big Northern Conference, but this game will not count in the conference standings. That's how they do it in the Big Northern. Only their next meeting next month will go down as a conference game. Lutheran went 3-0 against Rockford Christian last year, including a win in the Marengo sectional championship game. The Bulls will play in Charlotte tonight, and they will try to bounce back from a loss Monday night to the Pacers. And the Blackhawks are in Calgary to play the Flames. That is an 8 o'clock start. Well, 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 the New York Jets have hired Nathaniel Hackett to be their new offensive coordinator. This is big because Hackett was the Packers offensive coordinator from 2019 through 2021. He and Aaron Rodgers struck up a good relationship. The Jets are in dire need of a quarterback. If the Packers want to trade Rodgers, well, the Jets would be the ideal landing spot for him. Hackett was the head coach of the Broncos this past season until he was fired the day after Christmas. Patrick Mahomes went through a second straight day of practice for the Chiefs today. He amped it up a bit more from yesterday, testing his sprained ankle. He's sounding confident that he'll be in solid shape on Sunday's AFC Championship game against the Bengals. But overall, um, probably better than I expected, being able to go out there and, and throw the football around and get the reps in that I needed to get in. Obviously, I feel like I can still do a lot of things, um, but uh, it's gonna, we'll, we'll see as we get closer and closer, and we'll see during the game. Well, many folks in the sports world are passing this day with some sadness because it was three years ago today that Kobe Bryant and his daughter Gianna died in a helicopter crash in California. Hard to believe. What a loss. That's sports. We'll be right back. Jordan will have another look at weather in just a moment. But first, here's a look at what's coming up on News Nation tonight. Tonight on Dan Abrams Live, GOP Congresswoman Lauren Boebert joins us. I want to know if Hunter Biden's potential influence on his dad is now being investigated. Shouldn't the GOP also investigate the business dealings of the Trump children? And is it really pro-law enforcement to bash the FBI? That's tonight on Dan Abrams Live. Tonight on Banfield. Her lawyer is now representing the man accused of killing her daughter. More of my exclusive interview with Kara Kernodal and how this conflict of interest came about in Idaho. Plus, I'll ask her if Brian Koberger should face the death penalty. That's tonight on Banfield on News Nation. And the first born interactive radar from Rockford Auto Glass and more showing some of those snow showers working their way out of the area. You want to find that radar, you can find it on mystateline.com. Those moving out do lead to some clearer skies tonight. That brings our temperatures back down into the teens. So it's definitely a chillier night tonight. And more snow chances in the forecast here coming for the weekend. Another light chance for some snow as we get into the day tomorrow, maybe around an inch of accumulation. We're looking at a lot higher totals for Saturday and then much cooler as we get into the middle of next week. Well, it looks like it. All right, thanks, Jordan, and thanks for joining us. Have a good evening.